Evening all, Chief Prepper here. I uh, want to show you a few things that I've been working on for the last week and recently acquired. So, first thing is, this is a flat free tire. It's the fourth one of four that I needed. I had one on my garden cart for over a year and just did not want to spend the money because they're not cheap. But, uh... Now I have a fourth one because I put two on two weeks ago. This is a Berkey uh, spigot with a sight glass with the float in there. I don't know if you can see it. We got two of those. Sorry, just sitting on something right now, so I can get something out. And then. I have four of these metal spigots for my Berkey as well. So. Those kinds of things are gonna become almost impossible to get. Uh, and spigots work for many things, even if uh, I have four of the metal little plain spigots that are come in this box. I also, I haven't received them yet, but I've ordered and paid for them. Um, I have seven gallon Reliance water jugs, and uh, I've been pretty much using one nonstop when I go hunting. And then it went on my trip with me to Washington State and back. And then about three weeks ago, the spigot snapped off. So I've got plastic ones of those showing up here pretty soon. Very, very important. So nothing like having a water jug and not being able to get the water out of it in a judicious manner. So the world is changing. Um, I think we are much closer to something really bad happening. Uh, I've known since 2002 when I looked at numbers that we were not going to stand. I just didn't know how long we were going to be okay. Even without a nuclear or a conventional war, the U.S. stands to be bankrupt. Well, we're already bankrupt, but there's a point in the not-too-distant future where your dollars won't be worth much. So just look at it. We went over $31 trillion for deficit. And they're continuing to spend the money. So do what you will with that information. I've been conducting a chicken experiment for the last three weeks. Uh, it failed. I did not get any baby chickens. The hen has been steady, sitting on eggs steady nonstop for, since the end of September. And they're supposed to hatch at about the 21-day mark. So today I ran her out of the coop and threw away all the eggs. So... That's it. Uh, with the used to be an idea, used to be a conspiracy theory. Now, with the probability of something bad happening, like I said, even without nuclear war, even without dirty bombs, even without conventional war, uh, we're headed to serious financial trouble. So. I know for many people money is tight, but I would encourage you to try and enjoy at least one thing once a month if money's super tight. If it's not super tight and you can afford it, then once a week enjoy something, specifically something that won't be there later on. Uh, eating out is one of those things that I think we all enjoy. Sometimes it's a necessity, but like yesterday we had Slotsky sandwiches for supper, and then we went to... Huh, excuse me, SeaWorld for their hell scream. And I spent an additional $140, 10 for two drinks, and then 130 for Fast Pass. So we made it through all six uh, haunted houses, which was kind of cool. Uh, but when I was in Slotchkis, if you don't know, it's a Texas based restaurant. It's hot sandwiches, but they partnered with Cinnabon. So when I walked in there, they had Cinnabons sitting in boxes ready to go, and I bought two boxes of two. So that's an example. It's not very often. I haven't had that kind of Cinnabon in over a couple of years. So I encourage you to try and enjoy some things that are probably aren't going to be there. 
Bear Independent recently did a video about uh, urban and uh, rural preparedness and basically labeled cities as consumer uh, havens because they don't produce anything. I can tell you that if things go south and you're in the city, your ability to survive is drastically reduced. Speaking of that, I think we as preppers overestimate our abilities and skills, and I've said that often. Everybody needs to understand that their preps are a bridge to whatever comes after, whatever that is. Uh, good, bad, or indifferent. So if you're in the city, your ability to grow enough food to feed yourself is almost impossible. Here in Texas, if we have another summer like we had one this past summer, then or the summer before, where we got too much rain. This past summer, we didn't get enough. Uh, previous summer, I had blight on my on my vegetables, and then this summer, even with watering them, I didn't get any tomatoes after about June. So, um, so just understand if you're in a city, it's much harder. I can't stress enough to get out if you can. Some of you will say you can't, even though you probably could. You just don't want to make the sacrifice. But if you're in the city and things go the way they, they're looking, not going to be good. Magic Prepper talked about what to expect in the event of even just a dirty bomb or a tactical nuke overseas. Uh, I'm not sure he was wrong in his assessment. Having said that, you need to be cognizant of it if you're out and about when the news hits. Uh... Tomorrow I will probably go get my last load of firewood, basically a half a cord for $180, and I will probably drop the money for a chainsaw for just in case, because the chainsaw I have is broken, and it needs at least a couple hundred dollars worth of labor and parts to fix it. So, It's very important that you all pay attention to the information that is not being covered on the news. And be cognizant of the fact that uh, Ukraine said all the way up until the moment Russia started shelling and invading that it's going to be okay. The news is not going to tell you what you need to know. Seek it out. Pay attention to it. What I can say off the top of my head is the U.S. announced a nuclear sub, I think in the Arabian Sea, that's within striking distance of China and Russia publicly, which is something they don't typically do. We put a brigade of the 101st in Romania. Recently, B-1Bs have been moved to Guam, probably an answer to North Korea's bullshit. We have China and Taiwan. We have Iran. We have France. Multiple countries around the world that are in bad shape. We have the Greenpeacers' war on nitrogen so that we can't have the same amount of yield on crops. Food is probably going to become a problem in 2023. Everybody's been saying it since 2020, but it's looking like 2023 is going to be the problem year. It's already a problem. I go to the grocery store two or three times a week buying different stuff, and more and more there's holes everywhere. So if you're not stocking up on food, I highly recommend that you do so. There's so much you need to stock up on and learn about that if you're just starting, you're not too late, but you're really late to the game. And you got to play a lot of catch up. So, because I am fat and out of shape, tomorrow I will start uh, getting up again at 5 30 in the morning like I used to when I was a mommy, which I absolutely hate. So, that should tell you how much I am concerned. Monday through Friday from now on will be a 5 30 day. I may be asleep at 9, but I'm getting up at 5.30. So, a lot of shit I need to try to get done that I can't do with the current schedule. So, Godspeed, everybody. Seems like more and more news is all bad, and the future doesn't look good. Don't give up. Don't despair. And I am not trying to scare you. I'm just trying to get you on board with being more ready. Chief Prepper, out.